right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a lovely sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Paddy Pokerchuk, who is in Toronto, Canada. How are you doing, Paddy? I'm doing great, or we're sunny up here too, but it's a little bit colder, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> and and what I love about uh, about Patty's bio is she opens it up with "I'm not" and not in capital letters, a born salesperson, but living proof that sales is a learned skill. And uh, Patty says she was one of the shyest, most introverted geeks, but she worked with. She ended up in sales, working with startup companies across Europe, working with a lot of big companies, and now actually is a small business coach, helping other entrepreneurs sell and be successful. So, we're going to talk about entrepreneurial sales and the difference between that and uh, and, and maybe direct professional sales. Um, but first of all, um, Patty, just give give us a little bit of background about how you how you went from being a shy, introverted geek to being somebody who now actually coaches people how to sell? Um, it all started with playing a computer game back in the 70s. I always say I, I was born with a computer in my pocket. I went to, mm-hmm. to uh, a polytechnical institute mm-hmm. and I wanted to be an accountant, but uh, my brother was studying this thing called computer science. Right. And so I became a geek and um, I did only had a diploma. IBM hired me, but I well, I was taking too long to get. So I went back to school, got an MBA in marketing and IBM rehired me and sent me through six months of training. And I was forced to learn to sell. And I hated mm-hmm. corporate life. So I knew all I, my, my manager said, you know, sales is where the money is. You want to make money, get into sales. I made a lot of money. I, yeah. I made left. <laughs> And so, and so you've, and so you've worked with uh, entrepreneurs and startups and all of that. And so you say there is a difference between entrepreneurial sales and maybe being a, a frontline salesperson at a big corporation or whatever. So what are some of the fundamental differences? Um, I'm one of the probably really rare people who've had a tw- like a 20 year career in professional B2B sales, mm-hmm. selling to 25 plus countries around the world in two languages. Um, and, uh, and then I became an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur. So I've, I've, I'm, I've been, I'm, I'm a born entrepreneur as well. My dad mm-hmm. was one, my brother. And the main thing is when you're in professional sales, that's all you do. It's really, um, it's all you're focused on eight hours a day. You're selling, selling, selling mm-hmm. as an entrepreneur. You've got so many bloody hats on, right? Yeah. You're going, okay, now I'm marketing, now I'm operations, now I'm accounting, now I'm a CEO. Um, and sales is, is, an essential part because you know sales is no business but mm-hmm. it's, it's you just have to learn how to sell your product and service not not territory management not account management yeah. um it's, it's a much more um what i do is a, is a crash course i can take people from sales fear to sales fun in 45 minutes Wow. That's amazing. But yeah, you're correct. Because I mean, if you're if you're an entrepreneur, maybe you're working for yourself, you started up your small business, you're correct. I mean, you you have to sell obviously to to make some revenue. But then you also have to deliver it. And, yeah. and you have to prospect and build up your pipeline at the same time. And you have to pay the bills and you have to do a host of other things, right? And so, and, and let's face it, so, so it becomes hard to find the time to do any of these things well. That's right. And, and there's, a, especially in a certain demographics, 40 mm-hmm. plus, there's this resistance about learning how to sell because mm-hmm. it's just now starting to be taught at universities. There's 167 universities in the world now granting degrees in sales, yep. B2B sales. So it's starting to, uh, to come, uh, it's becoming much more a respected profession is being taught. I teach now at my alma mater. I get paid to go back to school, which is wonderful. Um, and, and the, the, you know, in a, in a larger corporation, you've got marketing, you've got product marketing, yeah. you've got people saying, hey, if you're a sales yeah. company, it's like, go there. And then they're, they're off. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, whereas that's, and it's interesting you say about this, the education part, because we actually, at Pipeliner CRM, we work with DePaul University and, and SalesPop as well. Our, our material from SalesPop is used in their sales courses. And the and the students they have an they have undergraduate and postgraduate sales courses and they actually place their their students into companies you know they intern as real salespeople so yeah it's it's start it's starting for sure that becoming more professional because it's interesting up to now it's like if you brought um, 
if you said to your parents, like I, uh, I was thinking of becoming like a, 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 an internal revenue, a tax collector or a salesperson, they'd say, go be a tax collector. <laughs> Right, that's right. But what I find that John, the difference is, is when I ask my students, you know, we're on a scale yeah. of one to ten sales fear, sales fun. They're all they're so used to being sold to. They're all like seven mm-hmm. and above. There, there's no. Yeah. And and to be honest, I mean the the number one job that people get straight out of uh, college anyway is sales, regardless of right. what degree you do, because you know you need a job, you need some money, and that's where there's a lot of jobs. So what you say? Okay, you say you're living proof that sales is a learned skill, right? And you're saying that the fear of, uh, often gets in the way. So what are some of the ways of overcoming that fear? Um, the ways is is, is is I would say there's for sales. There's four things. One is mindset. Is mm-hmm. saying stop hating on sales because if you're an entrepreneur especially a solopreneur no sales mm-hmm. no business so yep. stop hating on it so it starts here then it's a skill set so there's things uh, things like the sales process you have to know i i well, show and tell is usually better yeah so, so the seven steps to sales success and if you haven't been trained you go to a networking event go hi john i'm patty buy me here's my business yes. no 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 come on it's like dating you know sweet talk me first so mm-hmm. there's different steps in a process. So then there's so there's a, a skill set, then there's um, a, a process and a discipline. And this my mantra is always be prospecting. So you don't have the feast or famine. So you always right. have to be adding to your pipeline, um, which is a great name for a CRM. Yeah, yeah. Look at your pipeline. You can never, no matter how busy you are, you always have to be prospecting and adding and just every day. Kissing a few frogs, as I put it, you know. Yeah, and the and the trouble is that obviously that yeah, you know, prospecting is something that not everybody loves, and therefore it tends to get shoved to the bottom of the pile. Particularly, I mean, and even you know, even salespeople there go, oh, um, oh yeah, I've got to I've got to send some emails to my current customer, or I've got to do this. I'll, I'll prospect later. Yeah, so I have an acronym for sales, and the first one starts, and this has been my mantra right from the decades when I learned to sell. Um, sales is being of service to others, so you're there to help people. You're not there to sell anything. So it's funny. Mm-hmm. I'm a sales coach, and I say, "Don't stop selling. Stop mm-hmm. pitching." When somebody says, "Come and pitch me," do not come to close more business. Ask better questions. So sales is being of service. A is for adventure. L is leadership, which you show by questions entrepreneurial and finally sales is success so if you come from the service which is like why larry levine and i are so attuned Mm -hmm. you're there to help and maybe you maybe you can't you know no absolutely and no absolutely and i think that's the point i think it's if sometimes you need to uh put yourself in a buyer's position right and just and just think of your own experiences of buying things and being sold to and what is that what is the one thing that you absolutely love is you love when a salesperson comes with insights and ideas and sounds knowledgeable and is actually trying to help you and and that person who's who says well um well we're probably going to be more expensive than the others and here's why yeah yeah. So, so when I was a shy introvert is that, um, asked, I, I, I didn't like to talk. So I asked a lot of questions. I was mm-hmm. curious and caring. I cared. You said the word, sometimes you have to put yourself, you always have to put yourself in yeah. the customer's shoes and know their problems better than they do. So it's more like being a matchmaker. Like where's, you know, you poke and prod using questions to go, ah, how important is that pain for you to get a solution? Oh, and, and being shy, I would just say, I have a solution. Would you like it, please? Would you like it? You know, <laughs> I had no polish. It was just like, I, I can help you. And because I didn't talk a lot, they they kind of thought, well, yeah, she must really, I mean, I'm just a good listener. Mm-hmm. And I would keep back what they said and say, hey, I can help. You want it? Yeah, exactly. And, the, and there's a, a key thing that you just said there is about repeating back what they said, because um, you know, we all like validation and we all like to understand that we have been heard. And it's an interesting thing that they um, they do in, in therapy, like in couples therapy and stuff, right? Is when people are having problems. No, and I, and I took this and I thought this was this is perfect, right? So in couples therapy, if it's a good therapist, they will say, OK, Patty, now you say what you want to say and you say it. And then they turn to the other person and they say, okay, now tell me what Patty just said. And you can't move on until you say, yes, that's exactly what I said. So whether it takes the whole like 
two yeah. hour, hour or whatever until they've actually finally repeated what you actually really meant. You can't move on. And I always look at that and I think that's perfect for sales because you should be validating what the person is saying. That's right. People just, and that's why being curious and I would talk, I don't always talk, I was was blessed to, I have an MBA in marketing, so I've got the business skills, Mm -hmm. but I would talk about, you know, them, like, you know, I'd pick up something on their desk and we just get into a discussion and it doesn't always have to be, it can be personal too. And it's, Mm -hmm. you know, people have to, you know, know, like, and trust you. And, and once they, you can get them, I talk about, you know, stories about, I can make, I used to sell barcode systems. We used to make barcode systems fun, believe it or not, because mm. we barcoded cows and manure spreaders <laughs> and the prime minister's desk and you name it, we barcoded it. And, and uh, we always had some amusing story and to show, and that showed that, Hey, this is a reference. This is the yeah. application. Here's the benefits. And Oh, do you want some of that? You know? Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. But but it's funny because going back to what we were saying about putting yourself in the customer's shoes, it's amazing how often uh, salespeople walk through the door and then forget completely that they were that they were ever a buyer themselves, and they go into this other mode. Yeah, I I, I say the first the number one priority for me as a salesperson is to make you feel comfortable mm-hmm. because you're just as afraid of being sold to as I am of selling to you. So. I have to lower that barrier so we can have an open conversation. And that's why the little bit of a chit chat, getting that rapport going and not, you know, so how did you get here? And, you know, we, we, we had a chit chat before this started. Yeah. It's like, Oh, I want to know. Cause I knew you were from Ireland. I knew yeah. you were listening to your podcast. I could just yeah. pick up that hint and it just, I don't know it brings back memories and yeah, it's, it's very important to, to, lower the guard and and don't go straight for business you know yeah and i think the and i think the other thing um patty that's really be, uh, that's really becoming more and more of a of a of a need or a desire by by uh, by people is you know technology and it's great like we we sell a crm and it's you need a crm to keep track of everything but there's so many other tools out there that people have automated and they've removed <laughs> themselves and put up so many barriers and and that people are craving some level of connection you know, especially in sales, they're craving some connection with the person who's selling to them. It's, it's still human to human. I still yeah. what I sell one person to, one, and I hate. Sorry, uh, there's there's a time and place. Like I love email marketing. I love sure. certain automation mm-hmm. tools like the drip drip drip. But yeah. when it comes to social media, you have to be engaged. It's it's yeah. it's you. It's not a, a VA. It's not on, if you if you know the the things where you've got the same post on this site and this site and the site and, and you never engage and you don't reshare other people mm-hmm. it's all about the engagement and and just yeah. making connections yeah. and, and if right and, and as a lot of people are selling virtually right now you keep saying to me is turn your camera on yes turn your camera on. it doesn't matter if the other person doesn't turn their camera on you turn your camera on because it'll yeah. make a huge difference and you don't even have to leave it on for the whole time uh, if if you're not if you don't have the bandwidth or you're not come or whatever but at least turn it on at the beginning and and stop this and here's the thing it's it's funny how many people who are used to being out there in front of people who suddenly have this fear of switching a camera on I know. One one of my best friends was a really top keynote speaker who was 15 mm-hmm. to 20 grand. He says, I, I hate myself on camera. Everybody hates themselves. So just get over yourself. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, I mean, because you, you look at me anyways. If you're on the street, you know, or in a meeting, you'd, see, you'd be looking at me. So get over yourself. Yeah. yeah. Well, I do say, yeah, when people say, oh, I, I, I don't like the way I look on camera. That's just because that's you can see yourself. <laughs> I mean, that's just exactly who you are. It's the same person as when you're up on stage. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's just like, oh, a vanity, vanity, right? It's just, yeah. it's, it's, uh, but it's so, but it's so much more, um, it's so much more of a, of a connection to the other person. Like I said, it, it doesn't matter whether the, the prospect or the buyer switches on their camera. What you have done is you have made that, can you put a face to the name? You've taken all that because otherwise we're fantastic at, at filling in the gaps ourselves. And that may not be a good thing. <laughs> no, no, and I think it's, you know, you miss so much. Uh, I mean, if you're on a phone call, you, you really concentrate on the voice, and it is very mm-hmm. different because yeah. visually it is a bit more distracting. But especially in the early stages, it's like you want to show and tell yeah. them, like you know, my branding is here, your branding's there. It's like. Yeah. <laughs> Well, because sometimes if it sometimes if it's just the voice, as I said, you you invent a, a composite of what you think that person looks like. And it's often like completely wrong. And it may be negative. You may end up going, Oh, I'm not sure I like that, but the sound of that person. 
yeah. and then yeah. when you see them on the hand, you're going, oh, they're completely different. So yeah, yeah. I, I would say that. What are some other things that you think uh, that people can do now to overcome the fear and embrace embrace this the selling part, particularly as they may be selling in a new way, maybe selling virtually for this first time? That's right. Um, it, it, it's, 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 it's always be learning, you know, find mm-hmm. your sales gurus to follow. Like for me, it's Gary V because he's the, my, my elegant way to put it is plod your way to profits. Like I've been in, you know, it's not sexy, but it's true is how it takes, you know, uh, last year I was saying I was in my ninth year of my 10 year overnight success. <laughs> and it's taken that long to reinvent myself coming back to my hometown after 30 years. So you have to have patience and always be learning. And, and um, for my uh, sales class, I took Jeffrey Gittimer's sales Bible as the textbook because mm-hmm. right. I'm learning from it. And if after 40 years of sales, I learn my students are loving it because it's, it's not a textbook, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and I was thinking the interesting thing is that, uh, is that people often sit around and wait for their companies to invest in them, right? To say, oh, you know, they're going to train me or whatever, instead of investing in yourself. And, and I often say to people is, uh, most people have a hobby or something they like. And I think, okay, so do you... Do you have a coach? Do you go to classes? Do you ever do that? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. And you go, well, why don't you do that for your job? The thing that puts bread on your table. That's right. That's right. So last year when I I was a professor now and really getting into the sales training for corporates and stuff, there I found out there's a sales educators academy in Orlando. Mm-hmm. So I said, right. I'm all in. So I went and it's like drinking from the fire hose. There were 80 sales professors and me. I'm probably the only hmm. non full time sales professor. And it was, but it was just the stuff I learned was, it was, it was amazing. Um, and because then again, I can use some of that where I have used it in this year's classes. And um, you always have to be learning. And it's, it's, I'm lucky I'm a readaholic. So, or watch videos. You can learn yeah. so much on videos. You know, the blogs, you, you, you offer content however you want to consume it. You're, you're mm-hmm. actually Gary V's kind of role model in a way because <laughs> different content, podcasts, TV, videos, blog, read, what books. You know? Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's that. That is um, that's when 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 I started uh, sales pop. That was one of the things that I wanted to do because I mean I understand and having been a, you know ran a sales training company at Healthway back in the day and all that is is that was the thing is people consume information in different ways and that's why you have to be and that's why well, obviously we we offer you know blogs videos podcast audio podcasts whatever it is but I think also. Um, from a sales point of view, people like to be communicated to in different ways. Yeah. And you have to understand how people receive inf- how do people like to receive information. Yeah. I also say learning how to sell is not a spectator sport. So it's, I call mm-hmm. it mouth memory. So you have to have some kind of role play. It's got to, so all my yeah, workshops, yeah. even online, are interactive. There's the one thing with Zoom has got the breakout room. So you can say, go pour yeah. up, start practicing. Because that's the only way you get better is practice. Yeah. Just, yeah. And I think that's unfortunate that, yeah, because I mean, that's what, um, you know, back when I ran the training company, like we were spin selling, I mean, the, the, yes. the um, you know, the workshops and that all based around role playing. And and when we uh, would recruit uh, salespeople, we didn't do interviews, we did role plays, we sent them, we sent them a, a, a scenario for yeah. for sales and they would come in and then there'd be three or four of us in the room and we'd play the different roles in it and and then one wow. somebody would observe and it's a totally different you you can quickly learn an awful lot about uh, that you're never going to get from a regular interview oh that's brilliant actually i still teach spin uh spin in oh in you do my, my training yes because it's still so relevant when people early on said well how can i how can i get more clients i say ask better questions yes, over here yeah. at the beginning if that's too late back here, right? Is it, yeah, no, it uh, is. It, yeah. it is, and that's the that is the that is the problem. That's one of the things that uh, that we we used to preach and we still do is like yeah. is it's early in the pipeline is when you can ask the questions and create value. If you've taken them all the way down, it's too late. Yeah, it's too no, late. you haven't established the value, and then they go, no budget, no time. Yeah. think about it. It's like no, no, no. Get the value out. Where's the pain, and what quantify it? Because everything's quantifiable, even if it's subjective, but there's you know employee turnover there's sales or lack of sales or loss of sales or lost opportunities yeah you put a number on just about anything even if it's just a a mental yeah and absolutely if you are losing a lot of uh if you have a losing a lot in the later stages of your pipeline chances are if you go back and really do an honest examination you'll find you're not qualifying properly yeah i once uh 
I once listened to a part of an, an hour and a half discovery call in the first five minutes uh, because the, my client was mm-hmm. so busy taking notes, he missed that money's an issue. First five minutes. <laughs> an hour and 20 minutes later, when he finally came up with the price, it's like, oh, money, yeah. money's an issue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I love money. what you do. I just can't pay for it. <laughs> like, <I know. laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's a lot. We could we could get we could get prospects like that all day long <laughs> who, lo- who love what you're offering but have no money for it, right? Yeah, no. Fill your pipeline with those. Anybody will take money for uh, take a value or you know advice for free. But uh, yeah. I, I remember when I when I did one workshop and a speaker friend, a life coach came and she didn't know why she wasn't getting clients because mm-hmm. she didn't know she had to ask for the order. And right. the next day she asked for the order and closed thirty five hundred dollars. Like it was just. Ask and yep. shut up. That's it. Yeah, so exactly. kind of t- I don't teach tricks. I don't do manipulation. I do, you know, techniques that you have to know. You have if you don't know, and it, that's why I'm saying it's not rocket science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's no way. It is. And I think, and, and obviously, from you can see how Patty comes across here, I think is you have to have interest and passion in what you do. Oh. Because let's face it, if you if you come to sell something to me. But I don't feel like you even like your product or your company or you're excited about doing this or this is this is routine or mundane or you hate it. I mean, my goodness, am I really going to buy from you? No, that's why I say you have to be passionate and I get the cheerleading thing pom poms out. If you're not enthusiastic and enthusiasm is contagious, then then nobody else is going to be, you know, if you're not in love. And that's what I always say. Life's too short. If you're just there for the money. And I've been in that position where. Mm -hmm. I've had to work at a place I didn't like because I <laughs> three properties in three countries with six mortgages kind of kept me motivated until I could yeah. get rid of that and, and uh, become an entrepreneur. So, uh, but yeah, doing it for the money is not. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, I mean, in, in this, in this environment now, yeah, you may have to do things and maybe said it, but really like figure out what the value it is of your selling and just get excited about it. Right. And, and regardless of what it is. And now I think it's a time to get more excited than ever because we're, we're going, we're going through this horrible period and it's very doom and gloom and people need a little bit of light in their lives. So it's another opportunity for you to bring some enthusiasm yeah, there there is a light of and, and the whole thing with this kind of shakeup, like ten years ago mm-hmm. with the recession, yeah. is is the financial collapse. Is that market share changes? Now is the time to really capitalize. And I always say to my clients, who do you want to work with? Who's your ideal client that you enjoy? I mm-hmm. for me, it's I, I have a few professions that I don't I find boring. So it's like, oh, you're one of those. Okay, yep. Yeah. <laughs> You know, there's, there's fun entrepreneurs and then there's boring ones. So I pick fun all the time. It's part of my, it's part of my, uh, on my business card, it says have fun and make money. And the yeah. more fun you have, the more money you'll make. And if you're not having fun, who cares about the money, really? Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. Life's too short, as you say. Well, listen, Patty, this has been, this has been fascinating. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me on. It's- yeah, yeah, this has been great. And all of Patty's information will be in her contributor bio below this. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Uh, Patty Pokershek, the only one in the world. Just Google my name and you'll you'll find um, the most the accidental farmer to, and an accidental million dollar salesperson. But um, I've had an interesting life and I just help people really realize their dreams about living a life without regrets. And part of that's being an entrepreneur. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I really encourage you to check out, uh, check out Patty's books. And if you're an entrepreneur and you need some help, uh, you know where to find her. <laughs> All right. My name, is, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.